Welcome to the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. Welcome to the Prog Talks, an interview series by the Prog Space, where we will be talking to musicians in all corners of the progressive music scene. Welcome back to another episode of the Prog Talks. I'm your host, Dario. And as always, before we jump into today's topic and welcome today's guest, don't forget the cup of coffee that you can get us that helps us out a lot or you can also get one of those wonderful mugs in our shop and now all the way from puerto rico is that correct calling that is correct christian ayala from avandra hi christian how are you doing hey i'm surprised you actually said that last name correct most people struggle for a while before uh you can get it right <laughs> i've had ayalo i've had alaya Ala- i've had all co- <laughs> all combinations of like uh different last names yeah. So, awesome. <laughs> so yeah. Um. I mean, we 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 we've been in contact every now and then uh, over the last couple of years through email or yeah. Facebook or what. So it's nice to finally see each other. Um. Uh. At least through the internet. Um. And <laughs> and and talk for real. Um. Yeah. You your band Avandra. You 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 have already three albums out. And um. Kind of the reason why we talk now is. Uh, because you're finally be coming to Europe with Avandra and you'll be playing the Prop Power Europe Festival at the end of the month or rather at the start of October. Um, uh, so yeah, that's 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 very exciting and it's, it's been a long time coming because I think also Avandra was one of, the, just like Feather Mountain that we had on the Prog Talks uh, the other week, um you you were one of the bands that were um announced already i think for the 2020 edition that couldn't go forward right or at least for the 2021 i just remember uh, 2020 that, yeah 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 right so 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 and you were luckily able to um to still be you are still available for this year um after two postponings uh postponements i don't know <laughs> yeah definitely post- yeah postponements yeah postponements yeah yeah definitely. um so yeah um maybe yeah. for for the listeners that don't know evandra maybe you can tell us a little bit about your baby your band i mean you're the guitarist and uh vocalist and and main man behind the whole operation and uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit um how does evandra sound evandra is like it's it's pretty accessible prog metal at least that's the and I'm going by what people have said, like every time we play live, um, like we just had a show here recently. Um, uh, and like people that don't necessarily listen to like prog music really liked it. because They said like it's accessible, the voice kind of, um, the voice doesn't sound metally, you know, <laughs> except in the, you know, I have a growl, like the third album, uh, there's a song called Afrin Realms where I did growl. Some people were kind of like, what, what the hell is this? <laughs> is this Avandra? What the hell is this? Um, this uh, upcoming album, I don't know, I'll talk about this later, but um, we are playing Prog Power this year, but we're also releasing our fourth album in that Prog Power weekend. So it's kind of like a double whammy for us, which just brings up a lot of like anxieties and stresses because like imagine releasing an album by itself is already very difficult. Now it's an album plus like traveling to a continent you've never been to <laughs> to play a fest <laughs> as well so it's kind of like ah but we've had a lot of stuff. we've had a lot of stuff. but anyway yeah i mean so avandra would be uh something like that it's like accessible it has parts which are technical i'm not gonna you know, say that we're simple prog not. um there is a lot of stuff that's pretty straightforward but there's a lot of really right parts and whatever and uh but we, I always try to like layer it with the most melodic vocals possible and the most melodic guitar lines possible. So again, it feels accessible to people still in you know, areas that are not. Prague is a very overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. Extremely overwhelming. <laughs> 
Um, I don't know. I have the feeling that your voice is kind of um, like like c cutting up uh, for like many seconds of of uh, like of like parts of words. I don't know where. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't sound. If... It doesn't sound yeah. like a connection problem. Maybe maybe a microphone problem more rather. Oh yeah. Just thing. Post work. I don't know if now you can hear me better or still cutting off. We'll we'll, we'll see. I, I I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's frequency that doesn't like to pick up or anyway. But we I think we 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 understood. We can understand uh, like ninety nine percent, which is <laughs> most important. Um. Uh, so the last two albums from two thousand nineteen and two thousand twenty. First, Descender, which was out on the like legendary uh, underground label Blood Music. And then Skylighting from 2020 uh, that you released uh, through the Dutch label Layered Reality Productions um, from Tom David. Um, was there like like the the the, the progression of uh, Avandra um, from from album to album? I now I have I have actually heard uh, uh, one song from the upcoming fourth album already, and. Um, I think there's there's a pretty big step uh, into a new direction. Um, so when b between the previous two albums, did you also like try to do new new things and explore some different new um, uh, sonic landscapes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So I mean, that's one thing that people can either like or hate about us. I guess um, every album sounds like Avandra, but every album is very distinct. Like there's no two albums that kind of sound alike. Um, Timora, for example, is was very wild, you know, and, and a lot of a lot of the structures of the songs are just crazy and and there's a lot of like you know technical parts and stuff like that that are just kind of there for the sake of being technical almost. <laughs> it's the first album. I kind of wanted to put out something that was uh, that would impress people but that also had, you know, good songwriting in it, like I consider it at least. And, uh, but those were just songs that I had written throughout, I don't know, maybe 15 years. You know, uh, I had riffs here and there, and then I would kind of connect this riff, with this riff, with I thought that it would be cool to jump from this part, to this part, whatever. Um, the Ascender came about in a very different way. Because Descender was the first time that I actually had a band play with me. Timora was me alone. Was that would have like, been my next question, actually. So yeah, audience. yeah. <laughs> Timora, Timora was just me alone. I, you know, I was started out as a one man band, and uh, it, it was actually just meant to be like the only album I ever released under Avandra or by you know, because I just wanted to release something. I was finishing my master's degree. I wanted something a little bit outside the academia, you know. Um, and so I looked to completing an, the album, you know, Timora, which I had started a few years before, but completely abandoned once I began studying. Um, but by the end of my master's degree, I was kind of like, man, I don't know. academic life is nice. I like it. I, I, you know, I pursue it, but I really want to have something artistic, you know, artistic created given to the world. And so that's where Timora came out. The thing I was not expecting was the reception of it was pretty hardcore, especially here in Puerto Rico, where not a lot of bands, I mean, I don't want to speak ill of, you know, bands here, but not a lot of bands had a production out with that quality, I guess, within the metal scene, within the mm -hmm. metal pop, you know, pop rock, we have all the big I, uh, pop, pop rock music that um but the first album was actually mixed and mastered by bob st john uh bob st john mixed a lot of the extreme albums oh wow he did yeah he did collective souls as well he did uh but he also did quite a few bands from puerto rico and a friend of mine who had been in a pretty big band back in the 90s um you know just again pop rock band back in the 90s told me hey have you talked to 
Bob St. John. Bob St. John has been mixing Black Guayaba, which is a pretty big pop rock band from Puerto Rico. Um, and he's really open to working with people from here. Uh, you know, he's, he's used to us, essentially. And I'm like, oh, I mean, all right, I'll talk to him. And I talked to him, and he was, uh, and so he mixed Timora um, and gave it a very different sound that every other album of ours would have for a very specific um, then people started asking me like, Hey, when are you guys playing live? Like there are no, you guys, it's just me <laughs> I'm alone, essentially, you know? And, uh, but it became so, so repetitive. Like I would get like constant messages on my, on Facebook that I was like, you know what? I'm fine. I'll experiment. Listen, here's the truth. I hated having a band. I hated it <laughs> when I was, I, I kind of left that part of my life behind because it got frustrating and, you know, I've, I've been in bands since I was like 15 years old and it's just people are right late. People, they do rehearsals and nobody knows the parts. And so I was just not up for it, but I decided to give it a shot. And so I hired, well, I say hired, but I, uh, the drummer, Adrian, was recommended to me by a guy. And I was like, all right, fine. And he was really good. Like Adrian actually studied music. So his, in his mind, this is all a discipline. This isn't just me hanging out with somebody. This is like, this is something he's done for four years where teachers have given him pieces to learn and he sat down in his house and learned. Them. So it's a very different mentality from just any, like whatever drummer that just kind of does it as a hobby. He saw it as something that he really wanted to do for the rest of his life. And we auditioned a few guitarists. That was a very, very long day. Um, we auditioned a, a few guitarists and then we, uh, Luigi, Who's Javier Rivera, who's our current guitarist? Um, he came in and he just killed it. Like there was no competition. It was just like chemistry-wise, you know, it was it was amazing. Like we all get along, we all like the same movies and we all like the same games and stuff like that. Um, but his playing, like he would complement my parts so well that it was like there's no competition. We have musical chemistry, perfection. Um, and then the second album, sorry, take a long story short. Um, the, the second album came along in 2019, and it was actually written during one of Puerto Rico's, possibly the, one of the worst hurricanes we've ever had. People were without power for more than a year. Like at that point, there was no electricity for a year in some, in some sector. I spent, I think it was like three months without any electricity. Um, my the, the only way I wrote the sender was because my mom had a power generator and she would turn it on for four hours a day. So I would charge the iPod, uh, sorry, the iPad that I have, um, for those four hours. And when she would turn it off, you know, spare the gas, I would plug in my guitar and use bias effects to write the sender. So I, I would literally just have the guitar in front of me, the light of the iPad hitting me in the face and in complete darkness around me. It's completely wow. freaking dark. And that's how I wrote the sender. You know, it was it, it was in bizarre circumstances. And uh, the label, Blood Music, was contacted by somebody who told them, like, check the band out. And I think they were intrigued by all the like, everything that was happening here at that time. Plus, they, you know, people hadn't really heard a prog band from Puerto Rico at that point. So they're kind of at the forefront of a lot of this stuff. They want to be the first ones to get there. Like, ah. Oh. <laughs> and so and so they sent me an email and told me, hey, can you send us a demo? So I just you know, sent them a demo and we're signed and the sender came out. But then they kind of tuned down the amount of music that we're churning out a year, like a lot. Yeah, and it yeah was I like, remember. <laughs> uh, and it was like, hey, so you can, you know, you can stay on board, but your next album will probably be released, you know, three years down the road. Like, oh, wait, wait. no, no, no. And uh, actually, this album that's coming out, you know, for Frog Power was the album, um, was the third album. It was the album that was supposed to be released in 2020. But in 2020, COVID hit. And so everybody was kind of confined to their houses. And I was afraid that Avandra would just fall by the wayside um, and not like remain active. So what I did was I wrote Skylighting and I recorded it in two months. 
The wow. skylighting was written and, and recorded in two months. I recorded, I wrote it March, March 2020 to like April. And then I recorded it one month after, you know, through that, for that whole month. And uh, it was, it was a very different album, a much more straightforward album. It was, had a lot of post rock parts in it, and metal parts in it. So it was very different from what I had with the sender, which was much more complex. Tone, not, a, not as complex as Timor. According to the other you know, musicians in the band, Timor is like the wildest, most complex. But it was much more straightforward, much more ambient oriented. It, it was much more about the feel. It wasn't about, you know, if you listen to a song like, uh, like Eternal Return, um, it, it has a very post-rock, very ambient feel to it. I was very influenced by Dark Show, the German show. Um, that whole mood, very influenced by that show. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Vikram Shankar was uh, did like I don't know. Man. Vikram was like I think on maybe like ninety percent of that album was with Vikram Shankar. Um, there were like there was like one song I think he doesn't do the last song. The rest of the song, there are seven songs in that album. So six songs was you know include Vikram. And then the other, the last one doesn't. But so Vic definitely gave a very distinct feel to that album. Mm-hmm. Because before that, I had done all the keyboard. Yeah. You know, Taimora and Descender, that was all me, influenced by more of a Kevin Moore feel, which Kevin Moore actually appears in a song called Derelict Minds that we released in 2019. Um, so that was, that was really cool. But Vic and I, we worked together really well. If there's something that Vic and I have, it's that our chemistry, when we write music, we understand each other, like, which is why we kept working. You know, Vic is on this next album as well. Um, he's going with us uh, to Prog Power. He's Yay. playing Prog Power. Yeah, he's going to be there, you know, playing as well. So, I mean, but it's because we got along really well. Both Wonderful. personally, you know, yeah, yeah. Both personally, like, we're, we're good friends. Like, he's an awesome guy. And also professional. Like, we just blend our, like, our music blends really well together. And uh, so this next album is actually going to be very, the songs that he's on, he's not on every single song, but um, the songs that he's on are just like crazy. He does some really cool sci-fi sounds and stuff that you would not think would actually, would actually work. So, uh, so yeah, so, and, and it's a very different album. Going back to the, you know, every album is different. Um, it's our longest album, which in Prague might not be the longest album. Just because it's one hour and four minutes, you know, which I know it's it's amateur, but it, in the prog world. <laughs> but I don't like I don't like super long albums, so I'm fine with that. Um, and uh, it has a lot of it's it's much more extreme in the sound. It's much heavier in the sound, which I know is like the most cliche thing to say now in the world. Like our next <laughs> album is the heaviest album yet, man. But, <laughs> In this case, it's totally true. And another cliche I'm going to throw out there, which is totally true, is that this is our best work. <laughs> You've heard that a million trillion times. I know. But it's this, in this case, I really believe it is. You know? um, everybody listening to it is just like, oh. Uh, because it, it also involves the other guys a lot. You know, the song that you heard was actually a combination. It was mostly written by the other guitarist. And then I added a bunch of stuff top of it, you know, vocal melodies, um, ha- inviting David Fremberg from Andromeda. Um, told you he's, he's on that particular song, and I'm super pumped about it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so there's much more involvement. And it's, again, it's just our more, it's, it, it's a very complex heavy album. Very different, <laughs> just, to go, you know, just to go even further than our next album, which is not that. Okay. And we're we're releasing an album next year, um, you know, a few months after this one. Uh, yes, you're you're breaking news. Nobody knows this, but now you do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we have a new album planned for the year after that, but it's a very different album from this one. And the album that is already written that goes after the one afterwards again is a very different one, <laughs> but kind of comes back to this 
<laughs> okay so you got you got you basically if, if i understood right you you got three in the pipeline one is coming out now uh coinciding mm -hmm. with your um uh, show at proc power europe um yeah. you you you, you kind of said that um uh, I mean, uh, Vikram Shankar is on there as a guest, and and he's also going to perform with you at Proc Power, and and you just uh, also dropped the news that you got David Fremberg from Andromeda uh, guesting on vocals, which is amazing because it's been too long since we heard him in a in a prog metal setting, I think. Um, um, but you you hinted uh, before the interview, you hinted at that it's it's gonna be like uh exclusive for prog power for the for for, for the time being but the uh so my question would be uh, when when can the general public um uh, expect a general uh release uh both physical and and digitally so november 18th that's when we're oh, gonna right. release yeah In... yeah it's just a month after uh okay so so what's the name of the album by the way it's called prodigal okay uh like the prodigal son yeah it has a lot to do with that concept of home and, and leaving and you know it's kind of like the hero's journey right? have you heard of that concept the hero's journey hero yeah in place. In, uh, when you do uh, screenwriting or or writing right. uh, writing a book <laughs> like a, a exactly a yeah, novel yeah. <laughs> right right star wars would be a perfect the, the original trilogy would be kind of like the perfect example of Luke starting out in Tatooine, you know, training in Dago about whatever, and then coming back for the Jedi to Tatooine, but he's no longer kind of like this farm boy. He's rather this, you know, Jedi master. That's Star Wars. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, that you, now that you mentioned Dagobah, it's, uh, there's a there's a French metal band called Dagobah, mm -hmm. and yep. and I and I saw them at at at, at uh, Summer Breeze Festival, um, in, at the end of August, and yeah, at the towards the end of their show, I I I, I tripped in the pit and 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 my knee was open. <laughs> oh, sh are you better now though? Yeah, all, all good, all healed. No oh, okay, worries. Okay. okay. Damn. Yeah, that, that's that's my association with Dagoba. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I remember. I, I saw the, the name of the band, and I was like, "Huh." <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the, um, the funny thing is, I checked out their new singles because I know they're like not really progressive, but they're kind of groovy and like mm -hmm. adjacent to prog metal, maybe. And um, I didn't really dig the new singles somehow. Uh, but I went to check out their set anyway and really loved it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have, like, you know, jumped in the pit. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's an interesting thing, though, um, what you're mentioning there with Dago. Because, for example, some people, when when the album came, well, when Avandra's album, whatever, which, whichever album, um, they kind of listened to it, but they were like, yeah, it's cool. It has great production, especially for being Puerto Rican, whatever. Um, but when they see us live, something completely changes and i've received this and i say this because I've, I've had this a lot of times where people say like man seeing you guys live i feel like i really never heard you you know I, i've listened to your albums but seeing you live is almost like this is the first time i'm actually hearing you it's so the energy is so different like in the albums it's much more kind of tamed and toned down i guess while in while live it's a lot heavier and much more aggressive it's a, it's a weird and bizarre thing and i think it has to do with going way back with what i was saying why timora sounds very different sonically as well to the next you know two albums thunder and skylight because bob st john has a kind of like very chaotic approach to mixing where he mm -hmm. just lets things kind of like go crazy and dan i love dan's mixing technique because dan is like He's the opposite of that. He's more controlled. So the albums sound much more controlled and they sound very clean and slick. And some people don't like that because some people are like, where's the, where's the aggressive or whatever, you know? I wanted more aggressive sounds. But <laughs> I, what, what I really enjoy about dance mixes is, is that he lets everything cut through. Like every, you can hear, you know? um, especially with precise music, you know, prog metal. You want it as, you don't want it as chaotic, to be too chaotic. This last album, though, I mixed it and he mastered it. 
and we kind of took a different approach. Okay. And I mixed I mixed it because I I knew exactly how I wanted it to sound. You know, I knew exactly how I wanted that that album to sound, and I had some mixing experience. This is the first time I released an album with my own mix, which is kind of scary. But you know, I I I had the guys come over a lot a lot of times uh, to my house and just be, listen. Like, okay, what do you think? Oh, you know, the snare. Give it more pop here. Give it more. Give the bass more space here. That and so it was kind of like this collaborative mixing thing. But I did like you know I was there like ninety percent of the time obsessing at two in the morning like ah. <laughs> girlfriend and just like go sleep, go to sleep. But yeah, I mean it's a but so it's gonna have a different sound both um, strong uh, song wise, right, structure wise, and sound and sound quality. So sonically. Um, yeah, you just it, it just uh, your description of the difference of uh, hearing uh, or experiencing Avandra live and on 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 CD um, or streaming, uh, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, yeah, now I'm 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 even more really really looking forward to seeing you live on the stage of Proc Power Europe. Um, you are gonna play on help me Saturday or Sunday? Sunday, second uh, of October. Yeah, we All play right. right after one of our favorite bands, um, Mir, and yes. right before, right before Seventh Wonder. That's which actually, actually, yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of the co-headlining spot you you kind of fell into I now know. with all the lineup changes you know with having post to postpone the festival of course uh, not all bands can come can can make the new date and stuff so yeah mm -hmm. first time in Europe that for us was kind of like a uh, I don't know is can I swear here or is it more <laughs> you can, of course no. <laughs> okay so, um that was kind of like the mind fuck for us because <laughs> Back in like 2019, where I think we were playing on a Sunday as well, but like at four or five o'clock, you know, it yeah. was like, but I think thanks to like, you know, we kept, we kept, we kind of kept being active during the pandemic and all this stuff. And Renee saw that, um, the organizer saw that. And since I told him like, we're going to release the exclusive for Proc Power. I think that's what kind of allowed us to climb up. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like, speaking of like CD versus live really quickly, Mir is a band which I actually heard the first time live. I hadn't heard me on, on that, like an album or anything. And I loved it. On the album, I liked it, but it does not compare live. Yeah. Live, it's so, like, jo uh, Johannes' voice is, like, so, I don't know, it's, it's much more aggressive, cooler yeah. kind of yeah. Um, uh, yeah, you 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 uh, played the the Proc, uh, Proc Space Online Festival as uh, just a, uh, as Mayor did. Um, so for people out there who are not able to come to Proc Power Europe, um, check out Avandra set, uh, check out uh, Mir set and all the other cool bands that were playing um, on our Proc Space online festival. There's You can still find all the um, three different festivals um, on our YouTube channel. Um, definitely check that out. Um, now, don't forget uh, to keep your eyes peeled on uh, Evandra's socials um, for the November 18 release of the new album Prodigal. Um, thank you so much, Christian, for taking the time. It was a pleasure talking to you, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you live in, um, yeah, about two weeks. Yep. Yep. Oh, my God. <laughs> so real <laughs> it's too real <laughs> thank you guys out there for listening uh don't forget to also uh follow us our socials the proc space and of course don't forget to get us a cup of coffee or buy some merch in our shop really cool stuff helps us out a lot as well to keep doing what we're doing here and i hope we uh, you, you like it so we and you support it so we can continue it uh until next time Take care of yourselves, take care of your loved ones, and keep spreading that prog love. The Prog Talks, produced by The Prog Space. Main host, Rune Belsvik Reynos. Produced by Rune Belsvik Reynos, Vanessa and Matthias Kirsch. All graphics and animations by Vanessa Kirsch. 
Intro theme by Giuseppe Negri. Outro theme by Sack Munavitz. This was the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. See you in a week.